All right. So um, this presentation is based on the pocket guide to human wildlife conflict emergency and response in Belize, uh, which you should or uh, will uh, receive soon. The contents of the presentation are the same as for the content in the uh, pocket guide itself. We're starting with what is human wildlife conflict and why it happens, uh, what is One Health and how it affects us, how to avoid human wildlife conflict, uh, a guide to assess conflict and emergencies, examples of common human wildlife conflict and wildlife emergencies in Belize, common emergencies and non-emergencies, and a short review of capture, restraint, and transport. So to start off is what is human conflict? Human conflict is an interaction that occurs between humans and wildlife with more often than not negative consequences for either one of the two parties or both parties. Uh, this can be because of the competition for resources, um, living space, uh, food or water, and it can affect humans and our livelihoods and the wildlife often ends up dead. Causes of human wildlife conflict include habitat loss with a growing population. Uh, we need more space for development, so we take from their wild spaces. Um, accidental or indirect feeding, uh, which is a result of improper garbage management on our part, uh, purposeful or, in or direct feeding, sorry, which is feeding animals for our entertainment or tourist attraction, which is very common and not really uh, supported. Uh, because it can lead to habituation, and habituation is when a wild animal becomes accustomed to humans and loses their fear of them, and it can lead to the animals attacking uh, humans or unsuspecting humans for food uh, that they get used to receiving from us humans. And again, uh, available access uh, through the holes in our walls, uh, in our roofs, or uh, through window screens that are torn, or over fences that are too low or that have holes in them, or they can e some animals even burrow under the fences to get into our yards or under our houses. So the One Health concept is the idea that the health of un of people, sorry, is connected to the health of animals and to our environment, and this. A main concern in this pocket guide is the concern of zoonosis or zoonotic diseases, which are diseases that are shared and can be transmitted between humans and animals. Either we can give the animals the disease or the animals can give us the diseases. Um, the One Health concept also includes antimicrobial resistance and food safety, which is important. If you would like to find out more about this One Health concept, you can visit the World Health Organization website or the Center for Disease Control Organization. Um, the website for the CDC is there on the picture. Or you can also visit the um, BWRC website and go to the, one, the Wildlife Ambassador page to find the link to the One Health uh, concept. So, sorry, the One Health concept is to have healthy humans, we need a healthy environment and healthy animals. Uh, why should we care? Well, our health depends, as in the One Health concept, our health, human health depends on the health of the environment and of the wildlife. Um, there on the right, we have statistics that 60% of infectious diseases in humans come from animals and more than 75% of emerging infectious diseases to humans come from animals as well. So that means the diseases are zoonotic. Um, 
uh, poorly managed wildlife can cause problems uh, for our economy and cause negative interactions with us humans, right? And again, why is it important? Because wildlife is important to um, our tourism industry. Um, and also because animals are an important part of the ecosystem, each one, each species play its own, plays its own role in their environment. And because animals are a part of Belize's heritage, it's a part of our heritage, so we would, should want to protect it. And for sure, coexistence is possible in order for us to ensure uh, the benefits that it brings to us and the benefits for our future. And then going into touching the topic of religion, where re religions share the belief that animals are God's creation and that us humans should be stewards for the animals and for our environment. So avoiding wildlife conflict, um, most of the time, as humans, we don't realize that we are, we are the ones that provide what animals want or need. And uh, that includes living space, um, shelter. We allow animals to get into our homes if we do not fix the, the our sidings that we need fixed or do not uh, properly cover windows. And then we also sometimes leave out food and water for them to get to, which is, makes it easier for them to get to, right? So education and a thorough assessment of the situation often helps with minimal risk. And if you need or come across a situation that you need advices, you can always call us at 615-5150. Nine, uh, that is our hotline number. <clears throat> and other ways that you can help in avoiding conflict with animals is to av avoid creating attractions, right? Cleaning your yard, um, properly placing animal food outside. And if there is any leftover, you either put it back in the container or uh, store it somewhere that animals can't get to it. Um, properly placed. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, eliminating accesses to buildings, um, uh, properly covering windows, like I mentioned, fixing holes in walls, in roofs, um, fixing holes around the pipes that enter the house or the building, uh, could be from water, or electricity, either one, and having a properly covered windows. And if you have a chimney, covering it with a wire mesh that animals can't get through. Right, <clears throat> and then the next is proper livestock management. Um, not keeping your livestock too close to the first edge or corralling them to a safe area and even getting preventative method uh, tools or yes, tools that could keep uh, big predators away such as donkeys. Donkeys are very territorial and can keep help keep uh, jaguars away from livestock. And last but not least, educate, educate yourself on these topics and what you can do to avoid them. And the BWRC can help. We have a 24 hour hotline service that can help with human wildlife conflict resolution, emergency assessment and advice or wildlife emergency response. Um, all you have to do is call 615-5159 before you intervene to avoid injuring yourself or further injuring the animal. Um, our services, again, include the hotline. Um, for receive, uh, we are here to receive impaired wildlife of all species. We offer veterinary care and rehabilitation for uh, the wildlife species and also necropsy services in case we need to find out why the animal uh, died. And we have this education program, the Wildlife Ambassador Program um, for training on request. And the BWRC always encourages non-lethal human wildlife conflict resolution 
and we support coexistence of humans and wildlife, sustainable development and conservation for our future generations. Now, assessing human wildlife conflict and emergencies, uh, some things that are important to note, uh, misidentification of species is common, uh, mis misinterpretation of normal behavior is also, uh, also does occur. Uh, for instance, with this anteater, uh, Tamandua is not looking for a hug. He's uh, in a defensive stance. And also some animals that do not necessarily need rescuing some, are sometimes rescued, which uh, leads to, which is accidentally kidnapping the animal. Um, and there is also always the risk of injury or zoonosis and training and use of protecting, protective equipment is necessary uh, to properly assess these situations. And then investigate, investigate why the wildlife is present. Is there available access? Is there food or water being provided? either directly or indirectly. Uh, these are the things you will, we look out for when there is a human wildlife conflict, right? And to avoid these things or to mitigate the conflicts, we could use deterrent techniques rather than um, killing the animal or relocating it. Um, we can use light noise, light noise or presence um, to get rid of the animals from our space. Because like, just like us, animals will look for a uh, cool, somewhere cool that they could keep warm also um, as in the dark to be safe, for safety, right? So what you would need to do is, uh, when assessing a human wildlife conflict or an emergency is take note of any actions that uh, you take, uh, questions asked and keep your record keeping um, short and simple and precise. Uh, you could always call the hotline for, for advice um, after collecting the information uh, that you may need. So to log and identify, you would need to get as much history of the situation as possible. For example, the, the information from the rescue, where it, where it is happening, who is doing the rescuing, uh, when and when, what time of day, uh, the date that it is occurring in, and get down as much information of the situation and the species information, like what species it is, why the situation is occurring and how you can help to um, mitigate the situation. Now, emergency examples are animals that do not try to escape or may more than likely be in an emergency situation because of injury, but please be sure to avoid kidnapping. And if an adult animal is easy to be captured, um, or there is little to no chase needed, if there is little, if there is, uh, if you have to chase the animal, sorry, then no help is needed. Right. It's only an emergency if the animal is easy to be captured again because of injury. Some common examples here in Belize, we have the jaguar or puma, the large cats that predate on our livestock. And the response for that would be to call the forest department. Uh, their numbers are also in the back, at the back of the um, Pocket guide. And to prevent this from happening, you could get uh, several recommendations from this program. In fact, 
And also, the, you could also contact Pantera, Yasher, Earth, Belize as well as the first department whose numbers are at the box, back of the pocket guide. And then we have crocodiles uh, predating on domestic animals are present in swimming areas, canals, and ponds. Uh, response for this would be to call the first department or uh, ACES up in the north, CRC down uh, in south, or uh, the BWRC here in Cayo. And prevention for this is to never handle or feed crocodiles. They can also get habituated, um, avoiding their habitat in during their prime feeding times, which would be more during the night. And always be vigilant of your pets near their habitat and cleaning your cats away from where people swim is also important to keep them away from, to keep the crocodiles away from humans, human presence. Then we also have tapirs that sometimes do crop breeding and sometimes cause uh, traffic accidents. Uh, responses, response or prevention for this, for crop breeding is to fence crops, uh, use deterrence techniques such as smell or taste or sound to keep them away from your uh, crop and to avoid vehicle collisions always drive slower at night at night especially and pay attention to the signage of animal crossings on the road and then we have the raccoons that eat our trash uh, damage our yards steal dog food nest in our walls, uh, attack animals, or are attacked by our domestic pets, and orphans that some people find, come across. So the response uh, prevention for these is to properly secure trash cans, eliminate all food sources from outside the house, uh, eliminate access to the buildings, to the walls, fix the walls, uh, fix the roofings, replace torn screens in windows or broken glass in windows. And if they are nesting in the walls already, you could use a uh, light source, uh, noise or smell or taste deterrences to uh, chase them away. But when chasing away raccoons, always be sure that all the raccoons can in fact move away. Um, Accidentally causing abandonment is an issue with uh, taking out uh, wildlife from uh, homes or buildings. Uh, so what is important to note is that animal behavior and their biology is very important in recognizing a real emergency situation and situation which can save the lives, their, the animals' lives. So other common emergencies and non-emergencies, um, hit by car, the outcomes may vary. They may get only stunned for a while and then move along, or they can even die. So for this, the best thing to do would be to observe and assess the situation and only intervene if injuries are sustained after calling BWRC for advice. Then we have dog or cat attacks um, that occurs with all species and it is one of the top causes for human related wildlife injury, right? So again, the outcomes vary. Sometimes the animal just goes away are done, the best thing to do is to keep your pets away from the animal after the attack has occurred or even before and observe and assess the animal if in fact the, it has occurred already. And if the animal is brought in or you see injuries on the animal, call the clinic again for advice on assisting. Um, 
and to help prevent any attacks from happening, keep your pet secure and observe the animal from a distance. And again, call BWRC for advice. And if you found a baby, these images are also included in the pocket guide. You can go through them to see what to do. If you find a baby mammal, or if you find a, a bird out of the nest, a baby bird or an injured bird outside of the nest. Now, continuing um, some more important notes on wildlife rehabilitation. Uh, species specific knowledge is required for some, for some situations. Uh, babies require special attention, especially if they are orphaned. Um, you must be trained to raise and release a wild animal. And that does not include being trained under the wildlife ambassador program. Um, further training is required to raise and release uh, wild animals. And please contact the first department or the uh, BWRC before intervening in any situation. All right now moving on with the uh, emergencies or non-emergencies. If you found a nest or a tree on the ground, and you find an animal inside the nest, you check around for predators, which would most likely be our own pets, and check around for the parents. If they are around, they may be vocalizing if, they, if a bird is, if their chick is on the ground. And if you can try placing the nest back up on the tree or uh, on a nearby tree, would be enough to help this uh, bird. Or if the nest is destroyed, then you can improvise and make a nest for the bird. Uh, for example, this shoe here was uh, turned into a nest for birds. Just be sure that the bird can stay inside it and that the parents can get in and out of the nest. You could use a shoe, a shoe box, a bucket, uh, anything that could hold the animal inside. Um, in case you find an adult animal on the ground, either a bird or a mammal or a reptile, and it is not moving, it is likely that it is injured if it does not run away. So be very careful because injured animals will still protect themselves. Uh, you could call the BWRC or forestry department for assistance when situations like this come up. And in the case you find one or more sick looking animals, always be extremely careful. Uh, remember that zoonosis is a thing. So observing for ab any abnormal behavior would be necessary and take a picture if possible from a safe distance, obviously. And in case you come across one or more dead animals, again, remember uh, zoonosis. And um, that animals can help with disease monitoring, especially in mass deaths. Uh, call the BWRC for assistance um, because handling dead animals has many risks. Again, remembering zoonosis and be very cautious. Uh, do not touch or remove the dead animal, right? Unless you are properly trained or equipped. If an animal is trapped, depending on the time of the day, on the species and the time of day, you could call the first department or you could always call the clinic immediately. The animal can be injured if it is trapped or if it is trapped accidentally or purposefully, it can be injured. And trapping an animal for relocation rarely works because Finding the cause for why the animal is in that area is very important. If, it is, if that cause is not fixed, then the problem will persist. Another animal will come and take its place, the animal that you have relocated. Right? And again, the animal may not be adapted to the new environment that you put him in, 
uh, finding proper shelter or food or water could be difficult and the animal can end up dead or it can go and become someone else's problem that is not necessarily concerned about the animal's welfare so the animal may or can end up uh, dead. Now, illegal pets or illegal hunting. Do not intervene if you are not authorized to do so. If you are an, are an enforcement officer, either with the police, BDF, Coast Guard, or a forestry department um, officer, then you have authority, I believe. Or you could call the forestry department, the police, or the clinic for assistance. And if while animals are released to you, um, if the animal is given to you voluntarily, uh, do not release the animal. They need to come into the clinic to undergo a health evaluation, screening, and possibly rehabilitation before it can be released into the wild. Uh, for people that have wild animals as pets, a uh, wildlife permit should always be displayed by that person for any enforcement officer. Now, surrendered wildlife, again, just as they uh, relinquished or voluntarily given animals, contact first through the department or ask for advice or bring it into the clinic. Um, and again, do not release these animals because they do need to come into the clinic for health assessment and possibly rehabilitation. Now, animal abuse does occur and it should not be taken lightly. The FBI and CIA have done studies and found that there is a link between animal abuse and crimes against humans, serious crimes against humans, right? So the best thing to do is to report it to the police or to forestry department um, and they will come and assist you. And again, do not intervene in these situations unless you have a legal authority to do so. Then in case you find a turtle or a tortoise, um, first you would need to know if it is a native species. We have a reptile species identification presentation for that specifically. And if the turtle is crossing the road, you can lend it uh, some help and take it to the direction that the turtle was traveling to, rather than putting it back to where the, the turtle was coming from, because if the turtle wants to cross the road, it will cross the road, right? And if the turtle is injured, call BWRC or bring it into the clinic, right? So we have some important species like the Central American River Turtle or the Hikati which is critically endangered. And it is uh, a game species here in Belize. And then we have the red-eared slider, which is an invasive species and should not be released into the wild at any uh, point in time. Then the short um, intro to capture and restraint and transport. Um, always remember that your safety comes first. Be aware of the risks of zoonosis, and especially rabies, which is 100% deadly if not treated before symptoms set, uh, start arising. But the disease can be prevented. It is 100% preventable with the proper vaccines. Now, personal protective equipment, uh, good quality equipment is always important. Uh, this is for the safe, your safety and the safety of the animal. Um, before we get into that, an important note is that cloth should never be used when dealing with woodpeckers or porcupines. The spines could get caught up in the cloth and rip out of the animal, which does cause injury, and the, wood, the beak of the woodpecker can also get stuck on the cloth. So personal protective equipment includes leather gloves. You could also 
wear latex gloves with the leather gloves, of course. Uh, safety goggles, towels or blankets, um, a bag or boxes. Uh, snake hooks, snake grabbers, snake tongues, uh, snake bag to handle snakes, wire cutters for entangled situations, flashlight for night rescues, uh, human rescue aid, human first aid kit, sorry, uh, for your safety, uh, newspaper for box lining, and you could also use blankets or sheets or towels for that, uh, duct tape to hold down animals, broom, a mop, or a shovel for coaxing or placing an injured animal into a box, All right? So the Wildlife Ambassador Program will provide in-person training for this section of the program, All right? Because again, intervention is only recommended after training. All right, so that is the introduction to the Pocket guide. Um, all right, see you again soon. <laughs>